Hey there guys, uh, welcome to the 28th episode of Daily Word Webs to Build the Cat. I'm Anupam Mishra. My introduction will give you the session in the end. Now let's jump into the topic. Speak in order to be heard. Uh, well, speak guys is the meaning of the route that we shall be taking up today in today's session. Uh, lock Q or however you want to pronounce it uh, or lock it, right? L-O-C-U or L-O-C-U-T. So let's start. Guys, uh, so guys, these uh, roots uh, have their origin in the Latin language and uh, what they stand for is uh, to talk or to speak, right? Uh, there are other similar roots, uh, other roots which have similar meanings like dict, uh, which we shall be taking up in the upcoming episodes. Okay, so let's start with the words now. So guys, at some point of time in your life, uh, at some point in your life, uh, you must have come across a person who who can talk really with ease, right? You know, he was, 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 and in fact, who, who just... Uh, who doesn't just talk with ease but also talks excessively right if you just get them started if you try to ask them their opinion on topic a wo aapko kaafi saari cheeze kam se kam 4 5 minute tak bata denge and then from their own uh, uh, you know uh, from their own uh, expressions or from their own uh, exposition about the topic a they would have come to some other topic b unhone shuru kar diya hoga and then they'll go on and talk about that topic and then uh, C and so on and so forth, right? So, so these are people who can be considered as quite loquacious in nature, who talk excessively and who talk with ease. It can have it, uh, a negative connotation. At the same time, it can uh, also have a positive connotation depending on how you're using it, right? So, both of these can use kiya ja sakta hai. Now, let's uh, imagine uh, the person who uh, you mila. Apart from being loqua loquacious, he's also kind of boastful. वो अपनी तारीफ भी बहुत बार करते हैं उसका ऑफ पॉम्पस किया रे यार मैं तो यहाँ गया था वहाँ पे ये ये चीज़ें की मैंने एंड अलग ही स्वाग था एट्सेट्रा एट्सेट्रा राइट एंड एंड सो हु कीप टॉकिंग अबाउट व्हाट हैपन विद देम हाउ दे एंजॉयड अ सर्टेन टाइम एट अ सर्टेन प्लेस एंड हाउ ग्रेट द लाइफ इज एंड हाउ दे आर हैविंग ऑल द ग्रेट एक्सपीरियंसिस एट्सेट्रा हाउ दे बॉट समथिंग न्यू राइट सो सो वॉट इज दॉट इज द टर्म दैट देर आर टू कैन डू टर्म्स एक्चुअली विच यू कैन यूज फॉर दैम uh who for for people who are kind of pompous and boastful and then, uh, you know unke liye aap do do terms use kar sakte hain ek aapka hoga magnum loquent right so a magnum loquent person would be a person uh, who use bombastic language high flown language to matlab ki ha bahut hi zyada uh they kind of pompous right as as i said that's magnum loquent document and uh, so so the, the later part of this loquent comes from the root that we are discussing today and magna uh, magni comes from magnus okay magni comes from magnus m a g n u s i think we have discussed this word uh, this this root earlier magnus that stands for great okay so i'm writing on this part i hope that's okay so magnus stands for great so magni loquent loquent right so another, another term that you can use for them uh, would be grandi loquent right these are grandi loquent people so again even in this case the second part of the root uh, comes from the the, the, the root uh, at hand that we have today and the first part grandi actually comes from grandis g r a n d i s which stands for something that is grand okay like like as in the grand slams that you have in the, these ten, uh, tennis tournaments right grand slams are basically your the the major tournaments of the tennis world right uh, like wimbledon or uh, Australian Open, etc., etc. So and and and, and, and often times tennis players, you know, they they recount to 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 see how successful they have been. They they kind of recount how many Grand Slams that they, that they have won, right? So those those would be your Grand Tournaments, your major tournaments. Uh, so that's about loquacious, magniloquent, and grandiloquent. Let's move on to the next term, which is eloquent. Now eloquent, me the later part obviously comes from the root that we are discussing today. Uh, loqu or loquit. Uh, the the first part, which is e, simply stands for out. Like like as in the word eccentric, right? Suppose you have the word e double c and eccentric. Like eccentric would be a person who is kind of a little out of the ordinary, right? And in the the sense, uh, it will derive the meaning uh, that uh, like like cent eccentric means out of the center. So you're you're assuming that if something is in the center, it, that means it is where it should be normally, right? That, that, and if it is not in the center, that means it's kind of out of ordinary so kind of abnormal kind of unusual right so that's eccentric so so someone having an eccentric personality would probably have uh, a personality that is not very common right similarly to yahan pe bhi eccentric mein bhi ye e stands for out and similarly even in, even in this case eloquent mein e stands for out so 
However, so eloquent literally, if you look at it etymologically, it means what will come out? Someone who speaks out, right? Well, the meaning is uh, slightly different. Uh, it's, it's, it's more like someone who speaks out in a manner that is very persuasive and fluent, so that they can convince anyone, uh, so, so, so that they can rouse a crowd. For example, uh, for those of you who, who might have been made to study uh, not the, the, the play Julius Caesar by Shakespeare, Wahape, there is this, uh, and, and one of when, in one scene of the play, there is uh, this character, Mark Antony, who gives a very rousing speech at Julius Caesar's funeral, right? So Julius Caesar was killed by uh, some conspirators who conspired against Julius Caesar. And then uh, during the funeral, Mark Antony is just Julius Caesar's friend. And uh, uh, during the funeral, he, he somehow manages to get uh, the permission of the conspirators to speak for his friend. And he, he ensures them that he won't say anything bad, he won't say but and he starts the speech in the same way. It seems like it seems very harmless and innocuous. Innocuous, by the way, means harmless. So uh, and and then uske baad dheere dheere, you know, he, he first it seems like he's actually you know praising the conspirators. Who tarif kar raun ki. But baad mein dheere dheere that there, there's uh, you can see sense some sarcasm in his tone. And then and then he's finally able to rouse the public to actually go on a rampage and try to kill the conspirators. So that would be an eloquent speech, right? Uh, by using which he was able to persuade the crowds. Right, a very persuasive and fluent speech. Chalo, eloquent ho gaya. Uh, by the way, uh, so, so, uh, another term that we can learn from this route is obloquy. Now, obloquy, guys, is basically comes, uh, you know, this word comes, the later part of this word comes from the route that we are discussing here. The first part of this word, ob, uh, simply comes from, is, is, the, is the Latin term that stands for against. So an obloquy is basically a speech that you are giving against someone, a speech in which you are, you are actually condemning someone, which you are doing against someone, right? And, and, and generally, you are doing that in public. So, so when you are your, your condemning someone or criticizing someone in public, that would be an obloquy, okay? So obloquy, another word, let's move on to the next term, which is colloquial. Now colloquial is basically, guys, uh, whenever, when you use such a language, is kind of uh, used by the general public, by, by, by laymen in general, would be considered as colloquial as opposed to a sophisticated language, right? So, so, so uh, ordinary or informal way of communication would be a colloquial way of communication. Colloquial, uh, the, the later part obviously derives from the root that we're discussing here. The first part of this uh, word derives co, simply stands for together, right? So you can see that means uh, kind of, uh, kind of uh, a communication that everyone will be able to understand. Right? Together is like uh, a, a proxy ki tar use hua pe, like uh, co is together. So so people talking together and being able to understand everyone in an informal manner. Right? Uh, there are many colloquialisms. For example, uh, when when someone is giving up, uh, people often uh, you know kind of tease them by saying, okay, you're gonna chicken out at the last moment. So pe jo chicken out bola ja hai, uh, that is kind of a colloquial term, right? Uh, which which stands for like giving up. So chicken out. Uh, similarly, you have like uh, if someone is asking about the approximate value of something, they can say, okay, can you give me the ballpark figure for this? So, kafi bar pe idioms bhi involved hote hain. So, colloquial terms. So, that would be colloquial for you. Okay. Uh, okay. By the way, from loquil, uh, there's another term that we can discuss, which is ventriloquist. Do you know who is a ventriloquist? Ventriloquist. Uh, chalo, iska pehle etymology discuss karte hain. Ventriloquist made the second part obviously comes from the root that we are discussing here. The, f the first part, ventri, actually comes from the Latin word venter, which stands for belly. Jiska matlab hota hai belly. Right? So, so you must have noticed that you know these you have these comedians jo ki ek prop leke aate hai, which which uh, it's, maybe sometimes it's a monkey, sometimes it's a uh, some other character which they are wearing in their hand. And then it seems like uh, it's the monkey that and then they, they move the uh, face or the uh, uh, lips of the monkey or whatever they are carrying that, that the character is carrying in their hand they move it and it almost seems like it's, the, it's, it's that particular uh, prop that is speaking right uh, it's not them who is speaking but in fact it is actually them and it's just that the comedians they actually they are not moving their, leap, their lips they are actually speaking from their belly okay that sound is produced from your belly Produce obviously they are, they are using their vocal cords of course but it seems like the, the sound is coming from their belly and they're not they're hardly moving their lips so that it might seem that the conversation or whatever is, is being said is being said by 
the prop that they have brought with them, right? So these people would be considered as ventriloquists, right? It seems like they, 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 it's, they are able to throw their voice in a direction such so that it seems ki wo us source se aara hai, which in this case is aara hai, which in this case is the prop that they have brought along with them. So ventriloquist. Uh, okay, so let's go to the next term, uh, which would be circumlocution. Okay, let's now imagine a scenario. There's a there's a kid, there's a kind of a naughty kid uh, who has just uh, the results I hain kisi din, and, and uh, uh, when he goes back home and, and uh, his mother asks him ki okay, well, uh, ask to aapke results hain, bataiye kya kya like like what have you uh, got for us? And, and then uh, very cleverly the kid tries to you know kind of avoid the topic. He tries to not talk about the results. So suppose karo ye agar result hai, to he 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 does he tries to bring in every conversation that he can about the result but not the result right he tries to talk about the new topic that was taught in the maths class he tries to talk about what one of his friends did some something that he found quite funny maybe but but every time his mother tries to drive him towards the discussion of his results he tries to avoid that what is he trying to do there he's trying to circumlocute okay he's trying to deliberately try to be vague or evasive about that topic right uh, circumlocution the second part comes from lock you or lock it uh, that stands for talk or speak and circum uh, is, uh, is, a, is a term that stands for around okay circum simply stands for around so, so to, to basically beat around the bush to not come to the point that would be circumlocution let's come to the next term which is soliloquy soliloquy guys uh, the, the, the first part of uh, the second part of the word obviously comes from the root that we are discussing here the first part that is soli comes from the latin term solus S O L U S uh, L U S, which stands for alone. So a soliloquy is basically is basically an act where you're talking to yourself. Maybe up room you're just having a discussion with yourself. You're, you're kind of introspecting. You're trying you're taking two sides for the same topic one by one. So right, so that's a soliloquy. Oftentimes uh, you'd observe this happening uh, so you, you, you'd be able to see so soliloquies in plays where you have just one character who's thinking out aloud about, about a certain topic or trying to make a decision about a certain scenario right uh, kafi plays mein kafi bar soliloquy hota hai actors aise karte hain so the act of talking out aloud to oneself often by characters in a play but zaruri nahi hai ki ye play mein hi ho ye like like a people can be talking to themselves uh, when they are alone so that's a soliloquy soliloquy se ek aur uh, term yaad aaya which is uh, which can be uh, Somniloquy. Now, somniloquy. Uh, obviously, the second part, you know, it comes from the rule that we are discussing today. The first part, somni, actually comes from uh, the root, uh, which is the same roots, S-O-M-N-I, which is a la which, which which in Latin stands for sleep, right? So, somniloquy is basically uh, the action or the habit of Talking in one's sleep, right? Agar need be so rahe ho, us samay agar kafi bar ab agar pata nahi ho, you you might have might or might not have come across people who do talk in their sleep sometimes, right? So that's uh, an act of that is that is considered as uh, an act of somniloquy. Somniloquy ho gaya apka. Okay, so that's about the uh, roots for today, guys. Let's uh, move on to the sentences. At this point, guys, you can uh, pause the video and go through the uh, sentence usages of these words, uh, you know, by going through these sentences that have been listed here. And as you can see, these have been sourced from uh, some reliable sources. Uh, the credits have been mentioned here. Okay, so you can do that. Here, you can again pause the video and uh, test yourself. You just need to find the correct order of sentences which have been shuffled, so that the right sentence, you know, is along with the right word. The words are fixed on the left side. You can also attempt this test uh, via a Google form, uh, the link to which has been provided in the description. So, guys, uh, here's the summary of the roots and words that we studied on a primary and secondary basis. What you can do is you can pause the video if you want uh, and, and uh, try to recall the meaning of these roots and the words that we discussed in the session today. So guys, so far as my profile and credentials are concerned, I have made a different video here, which will not be able to do it every 2-3 minutes. If you want to read it in a short video, you can pause and you can read all of this content about me. Uh, but if you go to the video, you will also get to see the reviews of the courses that I have conducted on other platforms in the, in the past, right? So uh, go on and check that out if you want. Uh, so that's about that and uh, pe, this, is the, this link will take you to the next video. And this should take you to the very first video of the series if you're new to the session, okay? So that's about it. See you in the next one.